Good day to all ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my art studio. My name is Khan and today we are going to create Samara from the movie The Ring. The Ring is one of my favorite movie in horror genre and I really like the girl in it. So I decided to make this thing with the polymer clay and I will also try new things on it. And also I'm gonna make this thing into three parts. So that's why this video will be a little longer. So without wasting any more time, let's draw that. Alright, so first of all we need to collect some very fine and neat reference images especially for the face and the main pose and also I collect some environmental images that comes very handy later so this is the pre-baked clay sheet the clay I used here is original Sculpey oven baked clay I already baked this clay so I can sit some time here and then I am doing some measurements so I can cut some straight pieces out of it and trust me this is the very fine way to create your models and you can also save a lot of your clay and money as well. So first I am making a television front frame and this is the very beginning of the process so it doesn't have to be very perfect or neat and clean. Super glue comes very handy when it comes to join two pieces together. Same thing I am doing with side panels and roof panels. Now what I am doing here is just start putting my main heavy duty clay around each corner to make it solid and in one piece. And the clay I am using is Craft Smart Matte Black. This clay is very durable and gives you very fine detail at the end. I know this step could be time consuming but worth the effort. And trust me this is the very best way to save your money and all. So I baked my model at 250 Fahrenheit for 40 minutes and after it's cooled down I am doing some sanding here. The sandpaper I am using here is P150. The reason why I am doing this because I really want a smooth surface to work on and second I am so comfortable with the sandpaper on clay. This is my style of doing polymer clay modeling. So I finish the sanding and I make sure all the sides are well smooth. And my next step is cover all the front panel with the heavy duty clay. At this point I'm just covering it up. I'm not precise about it cause I know I will sand it later. Same thing I'm doing with the top panel. Once you covered with the clay, just try to smooth a little with the help of your fingertip. Once you satisfied, bake your model again and after it's cooled down, do some sanding and you will have a complete smooth surface. So after the sanding, I am continuing building up the back structure as we did it before with overall. So that's how it looks when you're done. This is not the final structure, we will do some more later on. Now for the heaviness of the model. I am putting heavy duty clay all over inside the model and after I will cover all on the back. So 
So I covered all the clay and baked my model again. I also sand the surface to make sure everything is well smooth. Now I am giving my model a thin coat of clay finishing oil just to see what the final product looks like. And this is your model so you can do whatever the shape you want. But here I keep it simple and I will modify later with printouts. So after the clay oil dries, I am continuing building my model. Like I always mention that it's very easy to work on pre-baked models. You can do so many things without worrying about ruining your previous work. Anyways, so here I am adding some little details like switches and some buttons. You can use printouts for that, however I am gonna use both. After all the detailing, I baked my model again and I also gave my model some sideline design. I also did the back cover as you can see here. I already did the sanding and all. I leave the back side cover open so you can put any type of lights or LED into it. This is just an extra option and extra effort. However, the end result will amaze you. So my next step is apply all of my printouts. As you can see I did some background texture and couple of side speaker texture. So my first step is to cover and secure all of my printout texture with mud podge. You can also use the acrylic sealer but mud podge is so cheap and gives you the embossed result. So that's why I always prefer mud podge over the acrylic sealer. However, it's a complete free choice, even though you can also use plastic illumination if you want. Now this step could be very tricky. So I'm gonna take my time here and be sure I make a less mess. Here I am using mud podge, but you can use whatever you are comfortable with. So this is how it looks when you are done with the printout. Also acrylic marker and acrylic pens come very handy for the extra detail. Ok so my TV is almost complete. I still have to do some adjustment but I will do that later. So for the main table I am using this foam board. I already cut in pieces according to my desired size but if you want you can make this table long short, small or big. It's all up to you. Anyways, so before I assemble the pieces, I would like to give these pieces a wood texture by simply print the wood texture on a plain paper and applying it with the help of mud podge. You can do this step after assemble the pieces, but it would be much easier if you do that before the assembly. I also secured all the back with the tape so in the future it won't come off. Since I print the wood texture at home on a plain paper, I am giving a little shine to it by simply applying mud podge on it. And trust me, by doing that it will give you a complete realistic wood type of feel and look. As you can see here, you can also use the real wood sheet or a real wood wallpaper sheet. Here you can also see the big difference shade before the mud podge and after the mud podge. 
Now for the assembling, I'm simply using super glue for the fast fixing. If you want, you can go with mud podge. So that's how it looks when you assemble all the pieces together. I also add inside interior structure to complete the TV stand and it looks like stunning. And for the glass effect, I am using this thin plastic sheet which you can get it from anywhere easily. Or if you want, you can leave it open. After I put the sheet, I secure all the edges with the duct tape. And at the end, it looks very authentic and very durable model of TV stand. Okay, so for the main model, especially the face, I have these cake fountain silicone molds. This is the 8 baby face cake molds and it's only cost me around $15. And for the initial face structure, these molds are perfect. Even though it will only give you half of the face, but that is exactly what I want here. And later you can add some more details according to your design. So I baked half of my face, now you can add some more clay to complete the whole face. Then I bake the whole face again and start putting some more clay to cover the gaps and some imperfection. This method of face modeling is so easy that if you just focus a little and follow my instruction, you will achieve a very decent looking face. Also for the seamless blend, I use some clay oil to give it a smooth blend. After that, I baked my face again and I am pretty much happy about it. Now I start putting some more face details like cheekbones and eyebrow area. And slowly you will start getting a shape that you are actually after it. So I will say this, take your time while doing the face modeling because the face is the main key. If you did not get the right face, so was the point. And that silicone mold just gives you the initial structure. So you must have to build some details on top of it. Same thing I am doing with the eyes and the lips. And this is how it looks when you're done. Even though there are some more detailings to do, but I will do it later. Now I am moving into the body part. So first of all, I am using this 9 gauge 3mm aluminium craft wire. This wire is pretty much solid and kinda hard to work with. Especially when it comes to the small scale models like this one that we are currently working on. So here I am just doing some rough work just to get the initial structure. After that I am covering it with some heavy duty clay and bake it to set everything up.
okay so i bake the whole body and here i am just taking my measurement just to make sure everything going in the right direction so my next step is just to impose my model the way i want i am not worrying about the clay cracks because i will cover those later and again this is just the main initial structure so i am not so precise about it my next step is just to put the head on the body by simply applying some super glue i also apply some more super glue on each crack joint just to be safe that in future i have no problem and my model is super strong no matter what after the glue dries i start putting some clay to give my model a legit body shape in that way you can conceal all of your joints and you will get a rough body shape Here I bake my model again at certain temperature. Now I put this very thin steel wire for the leg. If you want you can also use 3mm aluminum wire but here I want more flexibility so I use thin steel wire. So after that I cover the whole leg part with the clay and bake it again. So I bake the whole thing again. Now I put some more clay for the legs to give it a shape. After you done bake your model again then we will move on with the feet. For the feet, first I am getting an idea that what size I should go with. Once you find out, I start working on feet. The good thing here is that we only have to work on one feet and it's quite simple. Once you're done with this, just simply join feet or legs by the help of super glue and blend it with some clay. So for the hand I will use the same technique that we use for Spider-Man. So if you haven't seen that video I highly recommend you guys to check the full video of the Spider-Man polymer clay model. So I finished my hands according to my character perspective. Now I will join my hand with the help of super glue. Now I start building muscle definition all around the hand and blend it nicely. So that's how it looks after you blend it. I also bake my model again to set everything on its place. And also I keep checking my placement of the model just to be sure that everything going accordingly to my plan. Now for the fun part which is painting. The paint I am using is acrylic paint by Simply. These paints are dry quicker and much much efficient. And be free to try some other colors and brands. It's just me who use stuff according to my budget and trust me, I always use good stuff. Anyways, as you notice, I am using old paintbrush here because you don't need a new one for this. Also, this is just a first coat of paint and I don't think there is need for another one. But we will see how the first coat turns out.
So after the paint completely dries, I am applying a very light coat of black wash. This step is help to bring the inner details of the model and give you the very dull texture. After the previous black wash dries, I am giving my model another coat of blood wash. And this is the result you get from the color washes. Now I start building some more face details like eyes and eyebrows. And feel free to make some last minute adjustment. I do that all the time. Only if I have my doubts or any concern about my model. Once I done, I bake my model again and blend it with some paint. Now I am gonna divert my attention on face paint, like lips and eyeballs. Now for the frog, I am using the same clay that we use for TV structure. So this whole part is kinda tricky and it takes me some time to figure it out. So I start with the main hand and shape it like a cloth. Since this clay is super super soft, so it is easy to shape it. And for the sleeves, I am just tearing apart just to give a old kind of look. So after that, I did the same thing with the other arm. Be sure you follow the right claw simulation for the wrinkles. After that I baked the whole model just for 10 minutes to preserve my previous work and then I move forward with the front and the back part.
I bake my model again for 10 minutes and continue working on bottom part. Before I bake the whole thing again, be sure everything is going well. And then I am doing the same thing with the bottom part that we did with the sleeves. So finally my whole frog is done and well preserved. Now it's time to give your frog a color wash. I add a little dark blue into the black wash so it will give me a bluish feel into it. And your whole frog texture and wrinkle comes out. So that's how it looks when your color wash dries out. Now for the skin peel off effect, I am simply using mud podge. Just apply where you want your effect to be appear and wait it to completely dry. After the much pot dries, take any sharp and pointy tool and start peeling it off. But just go easy with this part because mud podge is so easily come off. So just take your time and be gentle with it. So after that I am covering the whole model with the mud podge. Just a very thin coat to secure everything. This step is also give you a little glossiness but that's exactly we want here cause this girl is just coming out of water so we want that wet watery effect. Alright so everything is well dry. I also put some red paint under the pearly skin and here I am making the hair template for the hair. You have so many options for doing the hair, like you can make the hair with the clay. But here just for an experiment, I am using the real human hair. You can get this hair piece in any cosmetic store. Applying the hair on clay could be challenging, but will give you very fine and natural results. You can apply hair with the super glue or tic tac glue. And be sure apply your hair accordingly to your hair template. You can also use the lace hair patch and add some hair pieces to fill the gaps. And here is the final result but the hair is so puffy. So to make your hair wet I am applying some mud podge and leave it to dry. You might need 2 or 3 coats to achieve your desired look.
so that's how it looks when your model is ready it still needs some more time to dry so while my model is drying i am assembling all the models together by simply applying some super glue first i'm gonna fix our floor and tv table but you have to be very careful in this stage because super glue could ruin the whole thing but if you're not that confident then i must say a white super glue and go with some other sort of stuff after that i place my tv on tv base and fix it with some super glue then I place my main model and arrange its position. When I am satisfied about the position, I fix with the super glue. So our model is almost done. And here I am creating some wet watery effect by simply applying some mud pots. And at the very end, I create this simple plant pot just to give my model a nice look. If you want, you can create so many little things like chairs, some stand, and you can also make some side speaker for the TV and so on and on. And after all of this, just leave it for at least 12 hours to completely dry. And after that, you will get this. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to my channel and you will find all the details about this video under the description box below. And if you have any thoughts and any kind of new idea about my next art project, please let me know through the comment box. So see you guys next time and hopefully soon. Bye bye. See